You often hear about farms diversifying, but here in East Sussex there's a shoot that's offering more than the average pheasant day. The Ashbourne estate is blessed with some stunning, gin-clear, spring-fed lakes bursting with trout. So to make the most of his 100 acres, owner Douglas Chalmers has created a very special challenge. We do a thing called the McDougal, which is the challenge, uh, a bit like McNabb in Scotland, but, but down market McNabb, where you've got to get a cock pheasant, uh, shoot what you like, uh, but get a cock pheasant, and over lunchtime, you've got to tie a pheasant tail nymph fishing fly from the tail feather of the bird that you shot, and then you've got to catch a fish with a, the fly that you tied from the bird that you shot. Uh, and people tend to love that sort of bit of fun, and it's only for half a dozen people, so it's, it's quite intimate. The McDougal has been around for about six years, and out of the 300 or so who have attempted it, only about 20 can claim to be a McDougler and not a McFailure. The group here today are making their second attempt. They were the last visitors last season and the first visitors this well, you've season. You've got to be alive at lunchtime with a cock bird uh, to, to your credit. Hen birds are allowed, of course, but the challenge focuses the mind. <laughs> Grand game are not allowed, so this fox escapes through the line. The second drive gets another gun off the blocks. The third is right next to the lakes where they will be fishing this afternoon. One pheasant gets an early bath, but a lovely retrieve by Cassie ensures another gun has something to tie a fly with. Let's get a quick update on who is still to shoot a cock pheasant. We've got uh, Tom in the red shirt over there. He's got four cock birds already. Um, we've got uh, Nick, who's got uh, Cockbird, and we've got Christopher, who's got to Cockbird. But we've got John, who's a host today, and the other Tom without. So hopefully, after the next drive, they'll all be ready for their lunch and um, tying flies. That's about the size of it so far. Lots of competition. In the shadow of Tent Hill, where King Harold pitched camp before the Battle of Hastings, the guns complete another drive, but this one has been fruitless. Time for a quick breather and a refresher. Here's one in the eye before the last drive and a chance to speak to gamekeeper Roy. He thinks Ashbourne is a special place and is proud of being able to offer a truly mixed bag. It's what I call my heaven on earth. It's, it's the closest thing I could ever think to. If there is an heaven, this has got to be it. I do think people tend to find that they want something different, that's not just about big bag shoots. And, of course, very few people tie a fly. If they're a fisherman, they might have tied a fly. If they're a shooter, they might not. And then it, you get a bit of everything, you know. They get to tie a fly, they get to take the fly home. If they catch a fish, they get to take the fish home. So, you know, you've got surf and turf on your doorstep, haven't you? After a morning shooting, there are 13 birds, plenty for all guns to have a go at fly tying. But in every class, there's always one, and Tom has brought a backup just in case he didn't shoot a bird. He's got some peacock feathers. Just take about three or four, five, doesn't matter, strands out. After a hearty lunch, it's nice to let the food settle with some intense concentration. The expression on the face when they catch a fish with a fly that they've tied, They've never tied one before. I mean, that's just fantastic. You know, that's like seeing a kitty in a chocolate factory. It's, you know, you can't, you, you just can't get it. It's fantastic. So hopefully, you know, that's why they come back. Tuition is supplied by Douglas, who talks them through the fly tying. After about half an hour, all the guns, now rods, have something to be proud of. I mean, we had one person about five years ago who tied a fishing fly, said it looked like a bumblebee, never cast a line in his life, and he caught a trout first cast. So, you know, even I'm surprised on these these days. The lake beckons, and there is a real sense of competition. John and his brother Nick enjoy shooting and fishing and think the McDougal is a great way of spending a sporting day. You know, it's, it, it's very much a day focused on the challenge as opposed to sort of just... A high number of birds or whatever um, but yeah absolutely I think I think it's the combination and the idea that you're actually aiming for something um, and uh, 
you know, we're all fairly competitive people, so put it all together and it's a, it's a good combination. We've got some guys with us who haven't done much game shooting or fishing before. It's a really good introduction. As, you, as you've seen, we've got, um, we've got the place to ourselves today, so no one's worried about making a fool of themselves. And um, for people on a budget as well, it's, it's you know, compared to um, uh, some of the shooting that's on offer there, it's a really good fun day and uh, good value too. Roy. Within 10 minutes, John hooks a trout. Roy is on standby but doesn't assist. This fish has to be landed solo, otherwise it won't be classed as a McDougal. Well done, John. Although he doesn't know it yet, his fly will be taken off and presented to him at tea in a glass paperweight. This really is a shoot with a difference. Big bags at eight, but for a group that wants some fun and to try something outside their comfort zone, but within the comforting scenery of East Sussex, it's a must. If you want to attempt to join the elite group of people who can proudly call themselves an Ashbourne McDougaller, then drop Douglas a line, Doug Chalmers at AOL.com or visit AshbourneCountry.com to see all the other sporting fun he offers.